Okay, so I made a big mistake here. I installed this plank over a wood floor. I tried to staple it a little bit here and there to try to save the floor so that in the future it could be refinished if they wanted and it didn't work. So Hey guys, Jill the Tender here. Now I made a mistake on a job. Actually not really a mistake, but we were trying to preserve a hardwood floor in it by not doing much prep to it, trying to not put screws in it, trying to save money from the ridiculous lumber prices that we have right now by not ripping out that three quarter inch solid floor and replacing it with another layer of subfloor. And I get asked a lot by people, hey, what do I do? I got a dip in my floor. I didn't notice it until after we installed. How can I fix this? Or, hey, I missed cutting a heat register out. What am I going to do? How can I do this? What? How am I going to be able to find it and cut it out now? Or maybe there's a bad plank not too far that's into your room a little bit. There's all sorts of reasons why you might have to take apart a plank floor. One of the beautiful things about this floor is because of the way it locks together, you can take it apart and put it back together. There's just a few things that you want to be careful with when you're doing this. And I'm going to show you in this video, along with talking to you about what happened, how to take your floor apart and put it back together and the tips that I will share with you will help you if this is something that you need to do. So here, let's watch. Okay, so I made a big mistake here. I installed this plank over a wood floor. I tried to staple it a little bit here and there to try to save the floor so that in the future it could be refinished if they wanted and it didn't work. So now what we need to do is we need to re, we need to pull up this vinyl plank. Here you can maybe hear it. So of course now it's not showing, but anyway, we are gonna pull this plank back up and we're gonna screw this floor so that it's nice and solid now and it's just gonna have to be that way. Um, I wanna just go through with you how to do this. Now some planks, you're gonna have a difficult time with tearing the plank apart, like a drop and lock plank. So drop and lock is the one that you put down, you put the butt, you put the butt or the main joint in and then you set it down and then you pound in the butt joint with a rubber mallet. Now life proof is, uh, most of their, their products are a tap and lock or a, or a drop and lock. And then there's some other products out there that you might have some struggles and it might not come up as easy. All right, so I'm just gonna start taking this floor apart now because I wanna put it back together exactly the same way. I'm gonna try and just put this stuff in different piles so that we can reverse it when we come back and have everything going back the same way that it came out. Okay, so this one right here is a little bit more difficult because I got it underneath right there where we cut. And so I'm going to have to be very careful on pulling this one out. It's going to take a little bit of work, but I'm muscling it out a little bit and now it came out of the joint. So now I'm going to bend it and pull it out. And then, like I said, I'm just going to keep making piles so that I know what went where. Okay, so I'm just going to keep pulling this out. Now I have pieces that are together. I'm just going to take them, just like I've been doing. I'm going to stack them, and then I'm going to make a separate pile so that I remember exactly where everything went. Now you can see how I'm just stacking them making piles now I know that this was the first one I took out that's the second row third row and I'm just gonna keep doing that now if you feel like you need to mark these with some blue tape if this is something that you run into that you have to do just mark the piles with blue tape to help you remember where everything went Now a lot of times taking apart plank, it actually comes to apart pretty easy. You can see that when we originally installed this, 
we did put all the appliances back in you can see how i left that piece underneath the dishwasher to keep it shimmed up um we did have all the appliances back in here so we really have taken the time here to come back the only thing that we didn't have is we didn't install the trim yet so we're about ready to get going on it and the homeowner decided finally hey it has too many squeaks in the floor we we're trying to preserve this hardwood floor as much as possible by just putting some staples into it hoping that that would help get rid of some of the looseness of the floor and just decided now that we were going to go through and screw it you can see how i layered or how i put all of these in a stack to be able to keep those you know separated so that we could easily come back and put this together now we're going to go around and we're going to start setting some screws so what i like to do is when i'm screwing a floor in multiple areas like this is we just go we hammer some in throughout the floor here and there and then we just makes it really quick to be able to come back and, and screw these screws down now we're using an inch and a uh, inch and a half uh, inch and five eighths i'm sorry sheetrock screw here so that it only goes through the wood and into the next subfloor down and gets a good bite so that that screw does not just sit and twist once you sink it it actually is getting a really good bite now and you can see how we just peppered this floor with lots of screws now we're ready to start installing again and so we're just going back reversing the order of how we tore this plank out now this is going to go back together nicely but you do have to remember now that you've already installed this once so you want to be careful and protect your protect your locking system use a scrap to put stuff together because if you've already hit your locking system a few times with the tapping block you don't want to break it and there's so many um, locking systems out there nowadays that are just so cheap if you look at them they fall apart now i'm going to talk about that in another video coming up here real soon about the different types of plank that i think are high quality what to look for things like that so you can see now we're on our last few pieces here we're sticking these in things went really well it took us probably about two hours to do this to rip the kitchen back apart again put the tear out the plank screw the floor put the plank back together and then reinstall all of the appliances including um, working around the dishwasher there Okay, so you can see it's not really too difficult to do this. And again, I mentioned in the beginning, if you have a drop and lock floor, it might be a little bit more tender loving care when you take those butt joints together because you pounded them together. They're not just gonna come apart when you lift it like it does when you have a tongue and groove. Now you can still take those kinds of planks apart, okay? Just be careful while you're taking them apart and hopefully, you won't damage it if you be careful if you notice when you start to take one apart that it's going to cause more harm than good then maybe you better just leave whatever the reason is that you were thinking about tearing the floor out but i i really haven't had a plank that i wasn't able to take apart so and if you need more tips with that you can always use some glue too if you need to make something work again okay i mean glue can be used with vinyl plank and also with laminate now, I also want to just give you a little bit of a push on this. Guys, if you made a mistake and you're sitting here pondering what should I do, if you have a plank that maybe is bad or a couple of planks that are bad or you don't like the way something looks or maybe you had a dip in the floor, don't hesitate to go and take the extra time right now to fix that. Before you put everything back, before you put all the trim up, don't hesitate. Just do it take the extra time you're not going to regret it right otherwise you're going to sit there and look at that eyesore or feel that squeak or that dip in the floor for the rest of the life of that that you have that or that you live in that house or until you replace it again don't have those regrets just go ahead tear the floor apart you can see there's nothing to fear by doing it and you will be happy in the long run right all right, so I have lots of more videos coming out, so be sure to check those out. If you're looking for installation tips on vinyl plank, laminate, or even tile, go check my channel out. I have a whole bunch of stuff in there that'll walk you through your entire plank installation. Be looking for that next video that I mentioned earlier where I'm going to talk to you about things to look for when you're buying vinyl plank. I'm Joel Latender. If you liked this video, hit the like button. If 
you like what you've seen here, maybe hit that subscribe button too. If you want to be notified by more videos, hit that bell. Hey, again, I appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great day.